coming up on this episode. We've done surgery after surgery. There's tumors inside the vagina. So we were able to get out most of them, but it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't look good because now she's not urinating. So we may have to sew uh, a catheter into the bladder, like, you know, so like, like, an, like a human would have, or we have to use that terrible word that I don't like to use. So today we have quite a few surgeries because we are doing like 11 German Shepherds, which are just huge. And then uh, we're also doing orthopedic surgeries today. And um, we have five doctors, so it's gonna be a pretty normal day for us, huh, Doc? We have too many doctors in that. We don't need that. I'll just name. Yes, we do, because you are the, you're the sloth doctor. You move. You don't make enough money for five doctors. Good point. That was bad. You're, bad, you're right. Bad. Bad what? Bad plan. Bad what? Bad plan. Bad, and who are you blaming? Who is it that you're blaming? An apple? No, no. Oh my God. Somebody That's give me a, review. give me that and I'll throw Here. it at you. No, don't throw an olive. You can't waste an olive. What if I flick it in your mouth? I will let you try. But you can try. No. You can try. Try and flick it in my mouth. No. No, I don't want to look in your mouth. That's oh, scary. no, you do. I love bright, shiny wood. Can't you leave you me, alone. Wait, you want me to give you your out? I thought you want me to flick it in your do you, mouth. Are you going to try? You want to hit me hard in the eye. Go ahead. Don't. Go ahead. You got to flick it across the room. I knew you'd miss. I almost got it. I almost got it. I knew you'd miss. But I almost got it. Oh, no, no, that's why I covered my eyes, because I know you'd miss. I can, no, it's Closer. <laughs> <laughs> I got it almost. <laughs> she tried to flick it and she missed. I know how you can get it in. Watch. I know how to, you can get it in. Watch. <laughs> you didn't close your mouth in time. I've never had a problem with that. <laughs> My name is Dr. Trisha Simmon, and I've been working with the Pet Care Center for about six months. I originally started just picking up a couple of relief shifts, but I have a really strong interest in surgery, and they have tons of surgeries that come through here, and tons of really kind of advanced and specialized surgeries that I'm a little bit more comfortable doing than maybe kind of the average vet who all they do is spays and neuters. So for instance, today I've done a surgery where I removed actually part of the hip joint in a dog that had been hit by a car and the hip had popped out of the joint. Once the hip pops out of the joint, it never really stays very well. And so in small dogs, a really good part is just to remove the part that keeps popping out and then the dog can go back to being a lot more comfortable just using its muscles as opposed to the, the joint itself. Right here, these are the organs that are outside of the body. Outside of the body wall, we have to go back and repair that. It's called an um, abdominal hernia. And this view better shows better the thoracic trauma. Right here, these ribs are broken and displaced from where the puncture or from where the bite wound was. And this is the, the caudal lobe of the lung that I'm concerned about. I can see that the lung is collapsed and it's severely bruised. It might be that this lung is completely devitalized and dead and that it actually needs to come out before it just starts to rot in the body. So I'm gonna have to go in and assess the damage and um, then take care of it. I love coming here because we see a huge variety of really, really interesting cases. And as a surgeon, it's just like my little playground. So I know we need to fix this surgically, but do you recommend that we do anything regarding that lung load? You know, I have gone into these lungs before and a lot of times lungs that look like this might just be like hanging by a little thread, yeah. just ready to, to kind of die away and start rotting inside that chest. Sure. So I probably would say that we should go in, check out that lung. If it's devitalized, we can remove it. If not, we can just leave it. Sure. And then that will also give us a chance to at least try to align these ribs a little yeah, bit better. Yeah, be great. came to us and um, they actually contacted me saying that they couldn't afford uh, treatment and they wouldn't have to put the dog to sleep. And I said, well, uh, they sent me some photos and the photos were 
astounding. It was the most terrific tumor I had ever seen. And those are the cases that I just break down for. I just love to help those kind of cases. So we donated the surgery and I think it's a huge success. So she's happy, I'm happy, and everybody's happy, including the dog. Alex, if it wasn't for you, Forrest would have died. I went multiple places. I did not have the resources. You were my last resort, and because of you, he's a survivor. And I owe it all to you in the pet care center. I want you to know that if you didn't save him, I would have had nothing to save. So you're an angel for saving him, because more people have to take this little guy who was in the desert, wasn't he? Yes. Just dumped in the desert? No, he, he was given to me, but he was person after person after person. By the time I got him, the tumor had exploded. It was bloody all over. Oh, I remember. I remember. And I thought, I'd rather try and fail than not give it a try at all. Something that is what spirit. That's what good rescue does. Yes. You work don't together. Exactly. You never give up. You don't exactly. stab. You work for the benefit of this baby, you know? I don't have to like you. I'm still gonna help your dog because that's what we're supposed to be about, you know? And I want to thank you more than you're thanking me because if you didn't bring the dog, I wouldn't have been able to save him. Okay? If I didn't have you, he wouldn't be here. I love you. Bless you. I love you. Thank you so much. know more than we do they know when they've been saved rescued animals know rescued animals know when they've been saved they're so appreciative yes. this little guy is like a gift he, he wags his tail all day long he knows he's, he made it he just that's true he did make it yes you did yes you did <laughs> well thank you for my kisses <laughs> who needs a date i got this <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Oh, I like you. Come on. You're pretty. You're still very pretty. You're so messy. <laughs> just because you like that in your mouth. No, that's you just turned straight, so that's what you like. I was straight to begin with. You were not. Well, it's. <laughs> you were what? Just because I was in an 18 year relationship doesn't matter. 18 mean gay. year relationship with a girl, but she's not gay. We're not Excuse me, them. we're having a serious conversation about her lesbianism. Nobody gives a shit about that. Oh my god. <laughs> I just asked her if she, do you want it? I mean. Is that what he said last night? <laughs> It's like an iceberg. It's like this. And, yeah, it's and this very one, firm. Yeah, I'm sorry, I have an important phone call for you up front. No, I do. I have an important phone call for Robin. Robin from Westside? Yeah, because you didn't get on the phone, on your cell phone. She didn't call me. She did. She said you're not getting her call. Seriously, don't have. Yeah. I saw the email that they're going to have to surrender him or something with a broken leg or something. Absolutely. Is the hospital going to give you permission, for, uh, give us permission to pick up the dog? Not a problem. Yay, I'll, you got it. Okay. Thanks, bye. Okay. Now we have to send a stretcher to pick up a dog from another hospital with a broken leg that was going to be put to sleep. So, alright, who, who am I sending? Which one of you guys, Abraham? I need you and one other person with a stretcher to go to access. No, 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 it's a, it's a broken, it's a broken, uh, access has a dog that they're gonna put to sleep. It's a white shepherd. We need to send a stretcher. You'll go? No, send him, he's cheaper than you. Jaquan and you, grab the stretcher, go get this white dog. Access is waiting for you guys. Take my car, come back, okay? Uh, apparently someone um, has a dog with a broken leg but does not want to, you know, uh, I guess take it home and pay, pay for it so they want to euthanize the dog. Um, so Westside German Shepherd, I guess, uh, wants us to pick it up and, and, you know, take care of the problem. I don't know, I guess they got a, we don't know the, the actual story if it got hit by, most likely got hit by a car, so, you know, we're gonna go see. But, you know, they just wanna, 
euthanize a dog for a broken leg. That's kind of fucked up. A lot of people like them here. Well, yeah, we, we tend to take a lot of pictures while they're coming in and after, so yeah. definitely. The staff really like them because he's a really good looking dog. Uh. Buddy is his name? Yeah. So the owners just. They wanted to euthanize because they couldn't afford to use the keys. Wow. Hey, buddy. He's really good, dude. He's pretty young, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's only because of the pain of the fracture, mm -hmm. not because he's aggressive. Mm -hmm. He's really, really sweet. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Let's see. Jaquan? Let's just put him in the back with him. All right. Oh, okay. You don't understand. Bigger dog biting is, is, is less than a smaller dog biting. Smaller dogs hurt worse to me. <laughs> You know, maybe tonight there's gonna be a lot of action. I mean, you just don't know. I mean, it's it's raining, so you know you could have hit by cars. You know, or you just you know, like I said, we just don't know what we're gonna get. Yeah, today's uh today uh, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays are we're open till midnight. We have you know we we're actually one of the few emergency hospitals around the area. You know, if not, we have to refer them all the way out to Culver City. You know, because there's there 24 hours but you know it's, it's gonna be a crazy day LA has the most straight dogs in any city in the United States it makes no sense how many dogs are out here. Like, he's like, you see a person, you see a dog. You see a person, you see a dog. <laughs> Every street you turn down in LA, 19, you're gonna find a dog, small dog or a big dog, walking down the street, just roaming. You know, it's crazy. It's like, man, so many people don't understand how the stuff that they do, and it's like, they think, they think it's okay, and then they dog just running down the street. They, they go find another dog somewhere. Oh, one dog is gone, so I'm gonna go get another one. It's like, man, they replace them like they're nothing. Okay, so you so you saw the so, so the dog. Let me see that dog. Oh my god. Oh my god. So you're gonna are you gonna go out there? We're gonna somebody's gonna go. Some some police officer local to that dog. It's in a different division. will go. Oh my god! Look how skinny that dog is. But it's so hard. It's so calm. And, but it's so hard to get a conviction or even, you know, a charge. Right. But you're not going to get any prosecution or... She's very skinny. Or she's neglected. That guy is, is neglected. So you know my situ my story from way back when, don't you, right? You've heard about it. You know about it. Way... I don't know your story. Like... Nobody's ever bugged you about me? No. And told you what an awful human being is? No. Really? I hear stuff about everybody, but I don't hear anything major. Really? Yeah. Oh. I just assumed you knew everything. Well, now I'm not going to tell you. Okay. okay. I mean, I've, I've had people say, oh, I can't believe you're going to PCC. Why? Alex and... Alex. But I tell you, I don't have... Okay, but what did they say about Alex? I don't know. Nothing. Just... I, I don't even remember. Alex, um, I have to think. Did you, did you have drama or did you, yes. work, did you work somewhere else? I own something. Oh no, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. oh. Years ago, I got bitch slapped, but good. And the whole thing, I'm still fighting to, to clear my name. And I'm all excited because I found some new evidence that might help me do it. So that what was that. What do they do? Do they take something off or do something? I hope so. Is I it hope. civil? So, <laughs> I don't need to. No, oh yeah, my gosh. I have no reason to. Oh my god. I can't do that. Really? Yeah. And then there's 
there's a sexual frustration between these two. Oh, is that so? Okay. Unless you guys have already done it, and that's what the problem is. Alma used to work for me at another hospital, and so I brought her over here, and she brought Felicia. And I think they were dating because now they're always fighting and it's kind of, I think Felicia's mad at Alma because Alma is dating a guy now, but Alma is supposed to be gay. But they're fighting because I think Alma thinks that Felicia's jealous of the fact that she's sleeping with men right now. So. I brought Felicia here about a few months ago when I started working here, about a year ago. Uh, I'm Felicia and I am a veterinary technician here. And Alma brought me here from the last clinic that we worked at together. So a lot of people think that me and Alma have had a, a relationship. I think she has feelings or people think that she might have feelings for me. I don't know. Oh, people think that, I'm, that I have a crush on Alma. Okay. <laughs> There's something not from my side, but I think that she does have some sort of feelings for me. Alma has the right to be with whoever she wants to be with. There's nothing going on. There's a lot of... I don't know. <laughs> uh, there you go. I thought so. My down, the rest to go. <laughs> don't forget about the other. Okay. What? Okay. <laughs> Are the cats done? No. I don't know. I'm gonna go check on them right now. Can you not mess with my hair? I actually did something with it. What? <laughs> you did what with your hair? Oh, she's got the lesbian look down pat. You see, you could learn from her. I don't think you have it down pat like that, you see? Oh, shit. Alma, where are you, Alma? Can somebody get to this? Are we waiting for another year for this to get done? Or I'm gonna have you guys sitting in shit. This is Olivia, and this is another one of those do we euthanize, recommend euthanasia. The owner really doesn't want to, and I'm kind of like on base with her, him. Uh, we've done surgery after surgery. There's tumors inside the vagina. So we were able to get out most of them, but it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't look good because now she's not urinating. So we can't get a catheter in there. and. Um, so we may have to sew uh, a catheter into the bladder, like you know, so like like an, like a human would have, um, or we have to use that terrible word that I don't like to use. Olivia for if Hernandez. She, if she can't pee, what are you going to do? They're not they going to euthanize. They're they're they to remember, they paid for tumor removal after tumor yes, removal. Who's going to do it? Dr. Simmons is saying. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying. And if you keep poking holes in her blood to get the urine out, what's going to happen to her? She's Rip saying to place a urinary catheter, like sew it into place. Well, she can't. She's she's yeah, she's trying. To the okay, here, yeah. Right now. Okay. Okay. Are you sick? Oh my God, he's sick. He's he's a, he's he's a contagious plague. You're sick. Oh no, 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 no. You are like a contagious plague. Ew, ew, ew. See, he's trying to infest infect me. Family. Thank you, Juan. Here, right here. Oh, one more time. Here. Okay, so this is, is this really a feral? Yeah, this little feral cat came into our warehouse, we live down the street, uh, about three days ago with uh, sneezing, coughing, um, and... Is he me? He's really friendly, actually. Then he's not a feral. He's well, just an outdoor cat. Well, he's pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. So I can touch him. I mean, he's frightened, really frightened, but um, he doesn't bite. He doesn't bite. It's just really oh yeah, you're not, you're scared. Yeah. You know, feral cats can be more vicious than, or is this very similar to a wild cat? Are you scared, honey? Are you scared, honey? Oh, you're just scared. You're not a feral. You're just scared. I don't blame you. You don't feel good. Okay. So here's the thing. How are you going to be able to treat him? Um, 
Because you're going to have to do it orally yeah, in the mouth. Are you going to be able to get it in his mouth? Yeah, because you can hold the back of his neck. So you can't. You can scruff him. Yeah, that's, oh, no, that's not going to be a problem. She showed me how. Okay. Um, and then I've got another cat who's upset about the whole thing. So we're going to try and keep him in a cage for the 10 days or so he's on antibiotics. And then I have a friend in San Diego who wants a kitten. So we'll get him neutered and vaccinated and then... See there? And you're... I'm Scarlett. I'm and you can come and get them done free here. Can I? Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Awesome. It's time for the neutering and the vaccine. We do a free here for you. Because you're in the right zip code. Thank you. Awesome. You're going to be... You see, you're a lucky kitty. <laughs>think that you guys think you're oh, better than me good. because you're doctors no, you and I think I'm better than you because I'm not. This is why doctors don't hang out around other people because other people <laughs> treat doctors like crap because they think doctors think that they're better than yeah. them. So they already treat doctors like crap. Everybody has to be respected. Everybody should be respected but you can't drop the I'm the doctor card because that's retarded. Well, you do it because the clients, if, if you're oh, with here, a client, in this yes. environment, in a though, client, I get that. This, but outside of this environment, it's nothing. You, you think I go to Pet Boy and tell them I'm a doctor? What's I think you would. Well, like, I think you would wear a t-shirt that says, I'm a doctor. I'm you're, you're super cool. Right. See, there you go. See? Thank you. That's my point. Why is it all my staff, like 30 people, and you guys all disappear like cockroaches when the lights come on? Where do you guys go? 